Okay, welcome to the webinar, Matrix 24 Self-Hosted Solutions. So, who are we? I'm Damien Edwards, Business Development Manager of Interface, and with me I have Andy Naylor, our Development Manager. Hi guys, uh, if you've got any questions throughout the webinar, just simply add your questions into the question box, and we'll try and get answer them throughout the webinar, or towards the end when we've got a little bit of time. So we are partners of Bitrix24, we're located in Sheffield in the UK and New York and we handle all pre-sales questions you have, uh, implementation and any configuration and customization that you need. We're able to offer hosting solutions and provide a premium ongoing uh, first line support. So what is Bitrix24? Bitrix is a collaboration suite of more than 35 tools covering sales, accounts, customer service, project management, and, and much more. Uh, more than 800,000 businesses and 3.5 million users currently manage their business activities within Bitrix. Bitrix is available as a cloud or a self-hosted solution. Uh, today we're talking about the self-hosted solutions and the additional benefits of those. Um, prices for the self-hosted solution for a lifetime license start from $3,299. So self-hosted is available in two versions. BizPace is the most popular and a suitable solution for most businesses. Enterprise is our most advanced product and allows a company to establish an unlimited number of extranets which can be managed by a single uh, global administrator. So for example, a company who operates in multiple countries may want individual sites for different languages. So what, what are the benefits of a self-hosted solution? One of the main benefits of self-hosted is uh, customizations. Uh, BizPace and enterprise solutions are full content management systems which can be customized extensively. Branding, including specially designed login pages, logos within the site, and some scope to customize the color of the theme. The control panel, so the control panel is the area for administrators to make changes to modules. Modules can be really configured in very, very advanced ways within the con control panel. If, if you've been using the standard cloud solution, then I think you'd be very impressed with the additional functionality available within the control panel. There's full access to all the source code, so this means if the customization you want cannot be configured within the control panel, it's usually possible to do this directly in the code. Bitrix is built, we should say Bitrix is built on its own framework in PHP, so changing source code should be only attempted if you have experience of PHP, as well as a very good understanding of the Bitrix platform itself. Uh, alternative, of course, a partner can perform this type of customization for you. Integrations and APIs available on the self-hosted solution allow you to integrate with thousands of other web applications. And again, Bitrix partners can help you develop this type of integration. And finally, self-hosted solutions have a number of extra features not found on the cloud, such as help desk, e-learning, and uh, analytics package. So now we're going to look at some of these additional benefits in a little bit more detail, starting with customizations. Um, really, really one of the main reasons for choosing a self-hosted option is the ability to customize the look and feel of your intranet. The site can be customized to match your corporate look and functionality can be configured to make using the system much more intuitive. Uh, styling many areas can be branded and we'll have a look at an example of this in a moment. Editing pages, any page can be edited and administrators can create custom pages using the page editor tool. Again, we'll have a look at that. Uh, navigation, to improve the user experience and save time navigating modules, the links in the menu panel on the left-hand side are fully editable and it's actually possible 
to display different menu items for different sets of users. Dashboards, it's possible to create custom dashboards to display sets of data on a page, e.g. a sales dashboard or a project dashboard. And custom portals, uh, available on the cloud and self-hosted. With self-hosted you get the flexibility to create a fully customer branded experience, for instance, if you want to create a, a customer, you know, we want to use the extranet portal for, uh, for a customer use. And finally, all modules are fully customizable. It's possible to create your own bespoke modules to perform tasks that are you know, specific to your, to your business. So we'll have, we'll have a little look at um, Have a little look uh, first at a login page. So we're not restricted to keeping the Bitrix branding on the login page. In this example, we've got a logo up, up here, some information about the business or the portal itself, and then quite a lot of information about regional offices. So really do anything you want with the with the login page. We just go into we just go into the site itself. So within the site itself, we can brand things like we can add a logo, and it's also possible to to, to customize some of the colours of, of the theme as well. Um, so let's have a look. Let's have a look at how we can create a custom page. Um, we'll create a page, and then we'll create. Uh, a menu item to, to be able to navigate to that page, and then uh, we'll add some content to that page. So Andy's going to show you how to do this. Hi guys. Uh, yeah. So as David pointed out, this is I'm just doing this self-hosted version of the tricks. Uh, if you've been using the cloud, you may notice some uh, key differences here. So one of the main differences with the self-hosted version is the ability to have the control panel. So there's two different areas where you can modify the site. So there's the wizard section at the top. So you can create a page here. Uh, you can edit a current page. And there's also you know, about how you can add different menu sections and things like that. But in this demo today, we will be adding a new page and a menu item to one of the sections on the left-hand side. And that section is going to be the services section here. So we're going to do that today by going to the control panel. So if I click on the control panel here, this is quite a fundamental difference, like we said before, uh, to the cloud. The cloud doesn't have this have this tool. And if you can click on to content <clears throat> and then files and folders. And what Damien mentioned earlier was that it, uh, the self-hosted version does have access to all the source code. And you can see here the the structure. Now, you can edit files within Bitrix, and that's what we're doing in today's demo, but you can also hook up your FTP clients if you're hosting it yourself, and you could edit files locally, like maybe your preferred HTML editor. So, as I mentioned, we're going to add a, menu, add a page and a menu item to the services section. So, to do that, all we need to do is find the services directory and then click into it. So it's quite easy to add a new page. You simply go to the view at the top, click add, and then it's an add file. And here you can see it's a simple Wazooig editor, so you can style the page yourself on here. So in this example, I'm going to just create a page. And what that does while you're creating a page, it also that also defines what the file name. You can change that if you wish, but in this example, I will leave it in a bit. If you if you don't want to use a WYSIWYG editor and you want to use the version of the HTML, you can switch to a HTML version, or if you prefer, you can switch to a PHP version. So in this case, <coughs> we're just going to add a page simply. So if I click on save. So now that page is being created, we need to add a page to the menu. And again, this is pretty simple. Each section has their own left menu. So we can click on here and then click on 
edit menu. And then if for this example, we'll just click into symbol mode. And then you can see here the list of all the pages within the certain section. And what I will do here is just add the page that we've just created. So, so you're, you're creating a link within the site here, Andy. Um, but you can see from here that you've got the flexibility, really, to create uh, links to any external pages if you wanted to do that. Yeah, that's it. That, yes, that's it. You can, uh, you can it's quite flexible, flexible in the way you can create a page here. You're not using the, the wizard itself. You're using that more flexibility to rename the pages or link out to external pages. Yes, and you can, and you can change, you can remove menu items here as well. So in this case, we've just saved that. So that menu is now saved. And if we return to the front end of the site, we should now see that menu item that we've just created down the left-hand side in the services. There we go, staff party. So if we click onto here, and this is the page we've created. It's pretty basic. And what I will do now is I'll just show you how to edit this page and add a component to play a video. So in this example, we're going to use the wizard at the top of the page and then click on the edit page. So you you see here it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty much identical to the control panel editor. And then what Damien mentioned earlier, Twitrix is made up on its own framework and it contains a lot of components that you can drag into custom pages. So in this example, what I will do is I'll drag a media component in there and a media player. So, so this is the parameters for this component and see here I just need to include a video. Now I've already uploaded a video to the server already and you can do that via the control panel which I'll show you. So click on here and you can see here I will include this video. Uh, and on this video I mean, you can include any types of video format that are specified here. So click open and then in this parameters in, in these parameters you can set the width, the height and all sorts of other uh, things that you may want to include. So it's quite a lot. You can do that auto start. It's quite a lot of options. To yeah, it's 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 you can see, you can see here there is a few more. So you can include a title that uh, you can publish on. You can see. So it's, yeah. it's quite good to build maybe your own know, video library. Mm -hmm. Hello, video as well. Mm -hmm. see. So we can click on save, and then there's the media player. And it clicks. So you can see here, the page has been successfully updated, and we click on play, and the video will play there. So, okay. okay, so so there we have, we've created a new page within the control panel, and um, we've created a menu item that links, that links to that page, and, and then we've gone and used the uh, the wizard or the page editor in order to add some some content to that page. So you could, I think, probably just create the whole page using the, the, the page editor tool. There's different ways, different ways to do it. Um, so, Andy, if you could just show us now, how could we then create a permission on that on on this page so that it's restricted? Maybe yeah. access is restricted just to a certain set of users or group of users. Yeah. Certainly. I think that's one key thing with the self hosted version is that it does have a very complex and uh, flexible access permission structure. So if we click back into the public hall panel and we go back into the services section, what we can do is we can restrict that menu item on that page to a specific user group. So if we click into advanced over here and then scroll down into the menu item that we so earlier, so there you are, so start party. So what I can do here is restrict that start party menu item to a specific user group. So for example, in this case, we can set it to the HR department. And what that means is basically anybody that's not in the HR department user group will not see this menu item. Uh, and anybody in the HR department will see the menu item. And I think that what that does is create a very dynamic user experience and mm -hmm. restrict certain areas of the Bitrix site to specific user 
Oops. Okay, and, and, and when, once you know how to do this, quite simple as well, not requiring any coding or anything like that, you just need to know where to go. That's it, yeah. So what I'll just, just play upon that, and we'll just, just a little bit further into the access permissions. We will be covering this in a more detailed webinar at a later date. If you click into settings, and then click into the user list, and you can see myself here, Michael Morris, click into that. And then this is how, basically, you can set a specific user to be in certain user groups. And you can import them into different user groups. So if you have a lot of users, say, for example, a 1,000 users, you can import them into different user groups from the app. So, OK. And then it's easy to take somebody out and use the group with if permissions no longer, that they no longer have, have access to that, that section. And I can see you can also be in a number of different user groups. So you might be in a user group for HR department, which we can see there, which would be the the, the job, the department you work in, but you might be in a in, a, in an additional user group that gives you additional access to other to other areas. So you can you do need to spend a bit of time, I think, just deciding how user groups and permissions are going to be configured for your organisation. But there's a lot of flexibility around. Yeah, I think that's what we would always do, isn't it? I think we would always, if we if we ever take a client on, we would always sit with them and decide what kind of hierarchical structure they've got, what departments they've got, and yeah. we can put them into the specific user groups and show you okay. how to do it. And you can, I can see there the activation period, so you can actually set a user's permission to expire at a, at a, at a predefined date. So if they're a contractor or intern or something, you know, they, they can be their, their permission to access that section of the site or the site overall could, could expire and automatically. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that, what that leads on to is Dave was just going to talk about the uh, ExtraNet side of things. So if we click back to the front end of the site. Okay, uh, yeah, thanks. So, a very, very important area of Bitrix is the, is the ExtraNet. So, Bitrix uh, license uh, includes, the standard license includes 25 main users, full users, and of course you can buy additional users on top of that. The standard license also includes an unlimited amount, no extra cost, an unlimited amount of extra net users. So these would be your suppliers or your customers or, or other third parties. So essentially what you've got is you're able to create a standard site for your main users and then an additional site for these third party users, typically, typically that would be that would be customers. Um, so when we have logged into uh, the extranet site of this of this demo instance, um, I, in this in, in this instance we've got the same logo, but you can choose a separate logo. You can actually choose to host this on a completely separate domain, and we can do things like change the login page. That could be different again to your to your main site. We could do things like change the some of the some of the color, colors of the theme, um, and in this example, we've got banners on the right hand side here, some calls to action, and you can see that the menu item here is you know there's much less there's much less options on the on the menu item here. So um, really, you can you can add any content you want. In this example, we've got access to a work group actually. Uh, Extranet users, um, Extranet users get access to um, quite a lot of functionality. So within work groups, they get access to um, a drive, uh, document drive, tasks, calendars, communication tools. So there's, there's quite a lot. I think some of the, the main areas that they don't have access to would be CRM and the kind of H, the HR tools. I think, I think like we spoke about earlier, with regards to user permissions, I think that's where this, this is where it comes into play. I think quite a lot of, of our clients maybe start off concerned about whether they can a client can access the your intranet side of things like your yeah. CRM, customer details. But that's that's definitely not the case. The extranet is a completely uh, individual entity. So you cannot. So they will only access that side of things. They will never be able to access your your intranet side of things. So it's, 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 I'm right in saying it's a completely it's a duplicate side. It's a completely a second set of files. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, it's got it's, it's got its own. The intranet has got its own components. Uh, like Damien said, though, it doesn't. The intranet 
doesn't include anything such as the I think any of the CRM side of things. But it does like say include the uh, work groups, which is really good. Create an extra net work group from your internet and then invite some of the more employees in there and also invite uh, some of your clients in there so they will access the work group via this side. Okay, and a really sort of common use of the extranet would be support tickets. So, as a customer, I can log into the portal and I'm able to review any issues I've had with um, any problems I've had where I've had to raise a, a ticket. So, um, I can review all my tickets within here. And essentially, the help desk. So, the help desk is again available to access through the through the, through the extranet, um, and it's only available on uh, the self-hosted, so it's not a tool that's available on the cloud. There's, there's essentially three ways as a, uh, a user I can access, I can create or modify tickets, uh, that's either through the, through the help desk, um, through, um, through uh, configuring my email so I can create a support at mydomain.com email address and that can create a, a ticket or we can modify it in, in the control panel. We'll have a look in the control panel in, in, a, in, a, in a couple of minutes how I can I can manually or how a support agent could manually add a ticket. So I think I think that covers just you know, just some of the areas where the site can be customized. So if we now look at some of the advanced features of the self-hosted, so all the features currently available in the standard cloud, standard and professional cloud solutions are available with a number of additional ones. And just touched on the help desk. So Help Desk is a tool to allow you to manage customer support inquiries. Customers log their queries in the portal, as we saw, and Help Desk staff can process tickets according to predefined rules. Um, we'll, we'll have a little, little look at how a Help Desk agent can access a ticket in a minute. E-learning is a set of tools which assist in the training of employees. Courses can be created. Staff members can set tasks, set tests to demonstrate their knowledge in a particular subject area. And it's also possible to configure uh, a user's profile to show things like badges when people pass courses. Uh, business processes, these are used to manage things such as, such as HR processes like staff leave and also sales and projects workflows. Essentially a range of tools to automate administration within a business. Um, available in available to a certain extent in the cloud, but uh, business processes on self-hosted are available to run on on absolutely any entity within within the within the system. So they're including things like tasks and documents, uh, CRM. I think the good thing about business processes is that uh, you can trigger business processes off via maybe I think we're going to touch upon it later later on, but via uh, forms within the system. Mm -hmm. So we can, we can create, like I showed you earlier, to put a video on the other page, we can put a form on a page, and that could trigger any business process you like to maybe start a new uh, deal, maybe create a word group. So it's quite a lot you can do with the self-hosted version of business processes compared to what you can do with the plan. Sure, so creating a form to, 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 to start a new project kind of adds structure to, to that project, forces the user to add all the right content, relevant content into that project from, from the beginning. Um, so we've got analytics, so essential to understanding that really the success of an internet project is a, you know, a good analytics package and we'll have a little look at that as well. So th these, are, these are just some of the additional features available with the self-hosted version. There are many others and essentially you can create your own. So many of the solutions you're currently using on other platforms can be developed by a partner on the Bitrix platform. So let's have a let's have a look at so we'll look at uh, continue to have a look at the help desk. So we looked at how 
in here, uh, I can add a, uh, as a customer, I can add a help desk ticket. You know, if I'm a uh, help desk support agent, then I can manage those tickets within the control panel. I think like Dave touched on earlier, I think one of, one of the key things with the, uh, the help desk is the, the ability to set up a mailbox rule to, like, like you said, the, the support at yourdomain.com. And once you email that support at yourdomain.com, your ticket will be filtered into here. Uh, and it allows you to also answer the, the creator rule where it allows you to answer the ticket from your email. Uh, so you can basically reply to that support ticket straight from your email, and it will always create a response to the ticket within Bitrix. Yeah, so so you, you, you've got the choice. Do you want to, you know, as a support agent, are you going to work in 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 the, the control panel here to manage your tickets, or you know, as a support agent or as a as a customer, you can just manage it by sending emails backwards and forwards. But yeah, as Andy said. Um, copies of those emails are recorded within the ticket itself, so you can see a full history of, of the of the issue within that ticket, and also that ticket is associated with customer in the CRM. So you've got always got uh, a history of any issues, or problems you've had with that particular customer. So I can review content of the ticket here, and I can create my answer. Um, we're able to you're able to create frequently used answers. So many issues arising tend to be uh, uh, repeat issues of the same of the same problem. So we can create these common answers here. It's also possible to then reassign a ticket to a to a different support agent. So you can create um, rules that mean the ticket depending on the con content of the ticket, the ticket is then assigned to different different people, different agents, support agents. So those that have particular specialities and specialisms in, in particular areas are able to respond to the appropriate ticket. You can also create rules that uh, define the kind of response rate depending on the customer. So you can give different customers different different time frames in terms of how long you'll take to respond to tickets. I think one final point to mention just on the uh, the help desk itself is the ability to the fields at the bottom here and at the top is that you can create your own custom fields. So for example if you've got if you might not want a status field you could create multiple custom fields where it will benefit your company in yeah. your to suit your requirements. Yeah, if you've got if you've created your own custom statuses and difficulty levels and categories, then you can filter out on by those statuses. So definitely. Yeah, you can filter out and you might want to use categories to really to, to, to really report later on the kind of outcomes, you know, how many tickets did I have for this type of issue. It's important I think to, to use those those types of those types of drop downs. And and you can create any number of additional fields within here. I mean there's quite a lot already which can of manage which kind of covers most areas that you need. So um, that is that's a quick look at the help desk. Let's have a look at um, analytics. So again not available on the cloud but available an extensive analytics package is available in self-hosted. This allows you to see key information on user activity. It's really good to see which areas of the system are popular and which are not so popular. So on this page I can see really which have been the most popular pages on my, my site. And I'm able to drill down here and then just find out which users have accessed um, which dates they've accessed the site. And interestingly also which from which IP address they've been accessing. So we recently had a customer used IP addresses to monitor their consultant's time at a, at a, a client site. So we were able to build a project dashboard for them around this, which allowed them to see where their consultants were at any time during during a working day. So a really a neat way of, of, of monitoring you know, some of their consultants' activities and being able to report on that. Okay. So I, I think, I think sort of thirdly and finally, 
um, the main benefit of a self-hosted solution will be integrations. Uh, started with forms, you can build forms on a public facing website and bring information from those forms into Bittrex. For example, an inquiry form could automatically create a post in an activity stream or a lead or a task or anything you want. I think that's it. I think that in the cloud in the cloud you can do this with the REST API in the cloud, but the uh, self hosted version, you're pretty much got a uh, an open playing field really. You can you can basically do whatever you whatever you like. You're not just restricted to making a lead. Like Danny said, you can create an activity stream post if you wanted and and maybe point that activity stream post to a certain user group. So only that user group can can uh, can can see that activity stream post. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what that's what you know, that's what the self hosted package gives you. I think it gives you the flexibility and the dynamic Mindset into how you can run your business a lot better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, secondly, uh, email integration. So we can actually self-hosted actually allows you to fully sync incoming emails with the CRM. So this is very, very different to the cloud. So in the cloud, we have a tool called um, Save and Sync, which allows you to do some some level of integration with self-hosted. We've, we've developed a process that allows uh, all incoming emails to find the right contact within the CRM and save a copy of that of that email. Uh, also, email rules can be configured to create uh, r really any other item within the systems, such as work groups and tasks and that, that type of thing. So you can create some quite you can create some quite effective and powerful integrations just by you know um, just by using the content of an incoming you know incoming email. Um, APIs, Bitrix includes an API which allows for integration with uh, other web services and ones we've worked with include Xero, uh, MailChimp, Trello and, and a number of e-commerce packages and finally databases because self-hosted customers have full access to all files and databases integrations can be developed by pulling information directly from the database for example, opportunities from the Bitrix CRM could be displayed in an external dashboard application. And I think with the database side of things, uh, Bitrix and the control panel does have something called a high load information block, which allows you to create new tables within the system that are completely update friendly. So it's not just a case of uh, you can see what data is already in the system, you can create new basically new tables within the database if you ever wanted to build more custom modules yourself. So and that is actually within the control panel itself. Okay. So so we've looked at really the three sort of main areas, three main reasons why you should choose a self-hosted over a cloud or why you might choose a self-hosted over the cloud. And those are the additional features available, additional functionality available, uh, the, the, the large range of options you have in terms of customization and um, possibility to integrate with other, other services. So let's have a little look at hosting options. You have a choice to host in-house or use a, a partner's hosting service. For, uh, for self-hosting we provide, so if you're hosting in-house we provide a Virtual Appliance, which is a free application that allows Bitrix to run in a pre-configured and secure environment. Uh, this can save time on product installation and maintenance and can improve your overall system performance. The alternative to that is Bitrix is hosted by a partner, and this is what we would class as a, a dedicated cloud. Uh, the benefits of partner hosting are server performance is, is all managed by the partner. Uh, it's fully optimized for speed. Partners ensure your data is secure and backed up, and projects can be scaled without investment in further hardware. Essentially, partners are specialists in managing servers. Partner hosting saves you time and provides uh, peace of mind. And typically, cost for hosting would be around fifteen hundred dollars a year. So pricing, um, the self-hosted 
solution is uh, you buy it as a lifetime license. $3,299 includes the first 25 users. You should, you should consider, even though it's a lifetime license, you should budget for annual updates. So uh, they're available at a reduced, much reduced cost. So in year two and year three, your, your annual costs for license updates will be $726 for the first 25 users again. Uh, your other items or other areas that you need to consider if you want a partner to provide hosting for you, as we said, approximately $1,500 will get you hosting and include some storage space. Maybe that you need to consider some customizations, branded logging page, maybe some uh, customizations to the look and feel of the site within the site. Do you need to do any integrations? Partners can obviously provide, partners can develop this for you. The cost essentially uh, associated with building those. Uh, very, very important would be training or your administrators. <clears throat> so we would recommend a day or a couple of days training with your technical people so you can get a good understanding of how to configure the front end tools. And then partners, including ourselves, are able to provide a, a premium level of. of first line support. So we put you in touch with a uh, dedicated contact within our support department there they're with you as you go through the pre-sale stage and then implementation and then they're your point of contact for all support questions going forward. So in summary, the main areas uh, the main reasons why you would choose a self-hosted will be customization options, possibility to integrate with other services, and the additional advanced functionality available. So there's some links there. Um, if you're hosting in-house, we've got some documentation that um, gives you details on the sort of resources you need to have available on your server. There's more information now on pricing, so we covered how much the license costs for 25 users, but if you've got more users than that, you need to buy uh, packs of additional users in, in fives and pricing's pricing up there for you. And then we provide documentation and videos, quite an extensive library of documentation on the Bitrix platform. That's it. There's our details. If you've got any questions, contact myself, Damien, on sales. Let's say in sales, or if there are technical questions, you can go to Andy. Uh, do we have any? Do we have any questions? Uh, just just one question, just uh, with regards to yes, the self-hosted version does work on the desktop application, and it also works on your mobile as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we've got so we've got apps for Android and an iPhone and yes, yes. that's correct. Yes. Okay. And, we, and yes, and, and and also somebody mentioned earlier with regards to the communication tools. Yes, the self-hosted version, whether it's hosted by yourselves or, or, or ourselves, it, it does have all the uh, communication tools such as video uh, conferencing and screen sharing as well. Okay. Okay, I'll leave our details up there for a few minutes, and um, if you've got any questions uh, for the next couple of minutes, put them in the chat window and we'll try and answer those, uh, or ping them over to us on email. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thanks, bye-bye.